Yeah, in this lecture, we will talk about oil analysis. Now, yesterday or in the last lecture, I had told you about wear debris analysis, and as you know, this wear debris get deposited in the oil, which is lubricating oil essentially between two rubbing or uh, moving components. So, in the process, what happens? The oil is also getting subjected to a lot of temperature variations, pressure variations and then you know sometimes it gets contaminated with the uh, environment in the sense you know dust or dirt get deposited in the oil apart from the wearing particles which we call as the debris which flake off the surfaces which are uh, rubbing against each other. So, oil analysis is also a So, so, when you talk about contaminant, it is the deposits in the oil. And apart from the oil itself, because when the oil is developed or manufactured, it has certain physical properties and also chemical properties. So, these properties would vary, would change with time because of the presence of dirts, wear particles. etcetera. So, oil gives us a clue to the machine condition, right. So, we know that the field of tribology is nothing but study of friction, lubrication and wear. So, it is have this lubricant between the mating or moving components to reduce their wear, I mean to reduce the friction and in the process they wear out also. So, what we call as wear and tear of the machine, this inevitably happens with time because you know a small, but very similar to, I will give you an example. Suppose, we have a road. and there are certain asphalt road. Suppose, a heavy vehicle goes over it. Okay. So, because of this load what happens? Some of these particles will get dislodged. And these particles would what happen? Will get of course, in the in the road they get dislodged, but imagine such a scenario happens between two mating components and then we have the lubricant. Okay. So, we will see how the properties change, how to measure the properties of this lubricant how to collect the lubricant and that is very important part of our study here. So, the contaminant analysis wherein we study in detail about the size, shape, nature and number of contaminants per given volume to and it gives us the clue as to what is wrong with the machine. But there is another part too of this which is known as this oil analysis. So, the oil's property would change. For, uh, for example, oil to begin with had a some specific gravity, oil had a viscosity, oil had an acid number or a base number. So, all these properties would change. Okay. It is very similar to maybe your you know, pathological 
analysis, pathology test which we do on the human you know, blood urine samples. Similarly, we will do on the lubricating oil. Well, when I say lubricating oil, I also we can also do them in hydraulic oil. Because you will see many machineries, particularly the mining machineries, the booms, excavators, etcetera, dump trucks. So, a lot of hydraulic operation is done to lift the heavy loads and this oil quality can also be measured okay. and of course, in a, in a normal everyday life any lubricating oil be it the engine oil okay, and so on. And all of you have must have experienced you now when we go to service your vehicle be it a four wheeler, two wheeler etcetera at a reputed or specified time we change the oil, oil change recommended after a time interval. Again if I recall our very first few lectures wherein we discussed about whether I should do predictive maintenance or periodic maintenance. In predictive maintenance depending on the condition of the machine, we do repair maintenance whatever, but in periodic maintenance you know in a regular interval we change may be the oil or fix the components, inspect the components and so on. So, sometimes in a, in a large fleet of machines or vehicles, the engine oil if it is changed at a fixed interval without even checking for the its condition in the long run it may not be cost effective but today the trend is we will do the oil change based on its on its condition now, who decides it conditions? It could be nowadays some online sensors are available to monitor the oil conditions okay, and so on. Uh, that is a little futuristic, but we will see when we talk about this oil analysis, what exactly do we analyze? As you know, this oil which I am collecting also will have debris or the wear particle. Okay. So, yesterday or in the last class we talked about for the uh, wear particles their size, shape, composition. quantity gives a clue as to the nature of the wear and so on, the origin of the wear etcetera. When I talk about origin of the wear, even in the oil we have certain chemical elements. Okay. Oil also we have certain chemical elements which have been given artificially in the oil for the following functions. 
So, the oil additives are because of antioxidation, anti wear, corrosion inhibitor, demulsifier, extreme pressure agent, viscosity index improver. So, these are the reason why such additives are added and they are essentially chemical components. So, when I do an oil analysis or if I look the, the oil sample under a spectroscope, I may find some elements. So, I should not be saying that this is a foreign element, so the oil is bad, no. So, there are certain purpose why this antioxidation is there. Slow down the formation of oil oxidation, which produces lacquers. You know, these lacquers could form a gummy deposit on the mating components, increase the friction you know, in the valve seatings, etc. They may damage the valves you know, in IC engines. We have these valves sitting on some. These are all spring loaded valves. So, imagine if these deposits come here, they would increase the friction, would increase friction. Okay. So, to remove these gummy deposits. we can do that. Of course, you know commercially you will see in a many of the fuel we add additives in our vehicles be it petrol or diesel. Sometimes you know the manufacturer recommends to put a fuel cleaning agent which would improve your vehicle's mileage. Because what happens? This should clean the system, this should remove this gummy deposits, friction would reduce and so more life and more power output of the engine. Similarly, improve the metal surface so that wear is anti wear elements are given corrosion because you know if acids are formed they will enable corrosion demulsifier to separate the water from oil improve the surface of metal under pressure viscosity index as you know is the rate at which the viscosity changes with temperature so this change could be reduced by using the viscosity index improver you would recall that when we talk about engine oil there are certain sie grades of engine oil which are based on their viscosity index. So, at low temperatures we use a different grade of oil at high temperatures by low and high I mean the low ambient temperature or the high ambient temperatures like in particular oil for winter and particular oil for summer. Okay. In our country, because the temperature differences are not extremely high, but if you go to the you know, close to the northern hemisphere to the poles where the temperatures are high for example, in Canada etcetera, we have two different grades of engine oil being used one for the winter and one for the summer. So, all these are good for the oil and they have all been added in the oil for a purpose, okay. but these elements will show up in the oil okay. and then we have to be careful about. Now, we had discussed about few of the spectroscopy methods. The same spectroscopy methods could be used to analyze the oil. I take the oil sample and do a spectroscopy because the, no matter what there are oil essentially you know some hydrocarbon compound C x H y may be or some combination. So, we and then plus certain elements. Okay. 
because we are developing synthetic oil also. Okay. So, all these techniques could be used and of course, when this oil comes with the wear, I can make ferrograms out of this oil, where if I take this oil and put it on an inclined feed like this, a paper roll which is being driven and this is smeared with oil which has contaminants and I will get a ferrogram because of the gravity, the heavy particles would come to the bottom of this paper and then I can bake it. So, this also gives an indication as to what is the amount of deposits being put in the oil and with time we can do that also. So, this ferrography oil wear particles which are large sometimes it can be seen by naked eyes and also by microscope. So, normal rubbing wear they are flat platelets about 5 to 10 micron in size cutting wear, thin to thick curl, curled strips, spherical particles, spheres 15 to 20 microns in size, severe sliding wear, long and flat, larger than 30 microns, bearing wear particles, laminar particles, edges split, holes present, gear wear particles, rough and irregular surface. So, as you all know, the when we do a wear debris compositions which are indicated in the oil, which are present in the oil, the quality and composition of wear metals allows us to set alarm levels. So, if I look with time, by the way as I was telling you this is not real time unlike vibration mounting where things are in seconds, this could be in months maybe or quarter maybe. first quarter, second quarter, I can set for a particular element say for example, copper in a bearing, this could be my alarm level. Through spectroscopy, I will see the parts per million, maybe in the first quarter is here second quarter it is here. So, you know if you third quarter. So, this kind of trending can be done and then I uh, will know maybe if I extrapolate linearly perhaps and this has reached. So, I can say time to change the oil before this okay. Or, uh, or to be worried either to change the oil of course, we need to change the oil because oil has got contaminated and also find out the root cause of wear because wear has to be arrested. So, quality and composition of wear metals, wear metals copper is the wear metal allows to set alarm levels and most importantly knowledge of metallurgical composition is helpful in localizing source of wear metal production. For example, I have a large maybe a gas turbine. In fact, many of the gas turbines you know which we import for our you know aircrafts, sometimes the comp material composition is not known okay, because that that is a you know, trade secret of the manufacturer of the gas, the gas turbine as to what is the material composition. So, sometimes without knowing material composition, it becomes difficult to find out the source of wear. Okay. That is something we have to be careful about. So, as you know, in the strategies of wear contaminant analysis, 
catch faults early, identify precise source of fault and identifying the abnormal wearing conditions. Okay. So, wear particle analysis tactics improve the quality trending and uh, density of the data, false positives, environmental contaminants during sampling because this oil has to be collected oil has to be collected and this has to be sent to a lab okay and then we have to get as to what is wrong with this but sometimes in the process, suppose I have a machine when there is oil. So, oil with time the properties are going to change, but in between somebody has stopped new oil. So, all your calculations of the concentrations of parts per million would change. Okay. So, one has to keep this into mind. Okay. So, the fluid or oil which we talk about, we can do the chemical element analysis by atomic absorption spectrophotometry or atomic emission spectrophotometry, particle analysis by wear debris analysis, ferrography looking under the microscope and if the particle size is high, we can use a particle counting by laser light or a filter. So, some of the metals present in the oil, if it is metal only, I can say confidently it is because of a metal wear. If it is an oxide, I can say because it is a corrosion and if there are dissolved metal components, I can say there is a chemical corro corrosion. <coughs> so, the effective oil analysis program needs to have these in mind because see I have I am a plant owner, I have a machine, this is my plant. And this is a central lab where oil analysis is being done. So, the oil has to be sampled and sent to this lab for doing all the tests on the oil. So, we should have a regular frequency, handle the oil sample correctly, proper communication in the lab that is very important I mean to know which machine you have collected this oil and sent to which lab and then you have to put the right oil because there are different machines having need in different types of oil. Identify the quantity of contaminants, origin of contaminants, feedback to the lab and evaluate the cost effectiveness. So, this is not done real time, it has to be sampled and so on. So, this sampling forms a good basis of oil analysis. So, some of the tests or oil analysis which you do is to determine its viscosity, find out the contaminations, fuel dilation, solids content, fuel suit, oxidation and nitration. Some of the spectroscopic tests I have just listed down the standard references you know you can refer to the standards which are internationally standards. The reason we do all this test to a standard is because many a times these results have to be compared with another plant or another lab. So, all the test has to be standardized, standard tests are used and there are ISO or ASTM standards for doing this oil analysis. Similarly, some of the physical property tests which are done on the oil are mostly based on some of this ASTM standards which I have mentioned here the kinematic viscosity at 40 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius, viscosity index, 
specific gravity, acid number, base number, oxidation stability, etc. So, the reason I am mentioning the standards is when we send our oil to a lab, we can specify that please do the test as per these standards okay. and similarly for the contamination tests okay. and similarly for the wear debris test. So, oil analysis sampling frequencies facts to consider the safety risk, criticality of equipment, environmental conditions, operating conditions. Imagine the oil which you take from a land based engine would be different, uh, the frequency would be different than from an air based engine or from a uh, water based engine. You know, maybe an aircraft engine you need to monitor the oil quality more frequently than perhaps a railway ro railroad locomotive that depends on the criticality. So, when we sample a oil please collect a sample that is representative of the material the system is producing and the contamination that has entered the system. Hence, <coughs> ensure a proper timing for sampling, prevent contamination of the sampling, sample during sampling. So, if this, this is an engine and there is an oil supply line, never collect from these points which are dead points, rather have a bypass loop and collect the oil when the oil engine is in operation and engine oil is in flow. If, because if the engine was not running, all the deposits would get put in the uh, engine crankcase and get deposited in the bottom of the tank here. So, some of these are some of the good points not to collect the oil. And of course, the oil has to be collected with clean sampling bottles. There are ISO standards to collect these oils and always use a vacuum pump, so that the this is put to the oil and this tubing need to be replaced other there will be cross contamination and you have this bottle you seal it, label it and so on. And all of this oil cleanliness uh, sampling methods as per the ISO standards, there are ISO 3722, it tells you how clean if you when you say the oil sample bottle is clean, super clean and ultra clean, what should be the condition. Okay. So, some of these uh, standards you can see in my uh, book and then uh, we can do oil analysis to prevent failures. Thank you.